Hi there, Tablet Vampires. Ah, uh, uh, this is the day Ravi Shankar passed away. Another great gone. Anyway, uh, it's a good day. Maybe put up another uh, instructional instructional uh, video. So today, well, actually yesterday, I went to get uh, a pair of tablet out and. <clears throat> To my horror, the result. <coughs> yeah, that's it, the old split head. See? <coughs> head was split when I went to it on my drum. So, it needs a new head, and uh, hopefully today I'll be able to demonstrate how to put a head on a tabla or a dian. Um, I went down to the shop yesterday, I couldn't get the same head with the same maker, um, there was a couple but they weren't the right size and as you know size is essential when it comes to size for your tablet head. Perf if you can get one that just fits on like a glove with no slackness here, yeah, all the better. If you get one that's a bit too small, you're going to give yourself a lot of hard work, even trying wedding it. It's not worth it. Um, certain types of heads, if it's a little bit small, you can stretch it over. But it's very hard work. If you get one just nice and snug, it's the best. If you get one that little bit too big, so you just take the head and there's a little bit of looseness if you slide it, then you can put some tape around the top here, yeah, and just keep putting it round and then clean it off with a Stanley knife or something, you know, so you thicken out the edge of it and put the putty or the head on to fit. I mean, obviously, not excesses, I'm talking about a little bit. I have done that before and it's been successful. So, <clears throat> that's the head I found. Not the same, and uh, it's supposed to be a Benares style head. Uh, I think this was a Delhi style head, but it worked really good on this drum. And I've had a couple of heads on this drum before that weren't so good. So I have no idea whatsoever whether this is going to sound good or not. But that won't affect putting it on. <laughs> you can put a head on and it can be rubbish, you can put a head on and it be so so you put a head on it be good or you can put a head on it be brilliant but putting the head on is still the same process so this is trial and error hopefully it sounds good it looks clean enough but you can never tell it depends on the quality of that spot so that's the tabla that's the head now here's all the tools I use you need one pair of pliers a scissors not essential um, well it is, but like uh, not the main tool. One screwdriver, um, depends, you know, like you can have a Phillips head screwdriver if it's small, just a little screwdriver and that is for putting through the holes in the head here, yeah? So because as you know you must have 16 holes evenly spaced around the head. 16 holes and sometimes with the heads the holes are very tight so you've got to before you put it on, you're best to push a screwdriver through those holes, like that, and space them out a bit. Obviously be very careful. Um, and if you want, maybe a little dot, pencil mark, something you can rub off after, don't use ink, to mark out your 16 holes. Make sure you've got 16 holes for your lashing as equal as possible around the head. So there you go. <clears throat> one pliers, one screwdriver, one roll of sellotape, a knife, that's for the end putting the string in. Uh, <clears throat> the blocks obviously which have taken off. The lashing, I've taken this off obviously. Uh, I would prefer to put on some brand new lashing but I don't have any so this one, I haven't seen any real flaws in it, but it's best to check it for flaws. Uh, you know, that when you're pulling it might break, so I'm taking a chance with this too. Uh, 
that's it basically, that's it. Pliers, screwdriver, scissors, sellotape, knife. Blocks, uh, the ring for the bottom, now this is very important too. This ring in the bottom, I mean, it, it, you know, you just want it with a little bit of space, you, you know this little bit of round bit at the bottom of the drum here, where just don't have it too big, the ring. I mean, as tight to that circular piece of wood at the bottom as drum as possible. If it's too tight, it sometimes gets a bit hard to put the lashing through. A little bit of space is okay. But if it's too big, it gives you problems with tuning later on. Also, the shape of a tablet is important. If it's got a nice slope coming out from top to bottom with a bit of width there, it's easier to tune when you pull it, it's easier to keep tuned. If it's more straight down, it's harder to tune, you know. Keep putting up the straps on the blocks. Just something I've learned from experience. Okay, that's the ingredients. I'm going to try and get the camera an angle so you can see how it's done. It's difficult because this uh, camera is just a home camcorder and it doesn't have wide angle or anything. Anyway. I'll do my best. I'm going to change the camera angle now and start putting the head on. Rest in peace, Ravi Shankar. Hello again. Okay, I think that might be a, a reasonable angle. I've just put a sheet on the ground. It's all funky here. I don't do any uh, fancy then. Uh, Indian Music College kind of stuff here. I don't use hooks, any of those fancy tools, like I say. Uh, I go the Indian way. Cheap and cheerful. Right, okay. First you get your lashing sorted out. Uh, right. Okay. Make sure with the lashing that you know, take, you know, you've got a nice point. You know, make this sure there's a nice point to go through those holes. So if you have to, you know, just trim it a little bit like that. So you get a point. Uh, send the other end if I can find it. Oops. Put that this side. Right, that's the other end. That point seems okay. I'll persevere with that. This is all in real time. Okay, as it happens the drum I'm doing today is the one uh, I put a microphone inside. Yeah, that's where you put the XLR fitting to come out of the drum. I've only got the one drum like this with the mics inside. It's just, I was wanting to use them yesterday after a long time. And there you go, you see the result, the weather, the humidity, shame, that was a really nice head. So, put the blocks in there. Right. Put the head on, get a feel for how you want to uh, position it, get your place. Right. Uh, because I've got this thing, I'm going to make sure that this XLR fitting, that the two holes are not going to collide with that. So that'll do me there, I think. Turn it over. There's the bottom ring. Put the bottom ring on, yeah? Uh, now, some of these bottom rings, I've put tape around this. I'm just going to leave it funky. They've got a knot in them, so uh, be careful how you position the knot. Uh, well, you want to be more careful when you're where you start the lashing with the knot. Okay, 
I'm going to sellotape. Actually, I'll start from the top. I'll just put that protect spot a little, that little bit of cardboard. And I'm going to choose a space between the holes, between two holes, put the sellotape like so, the sellotape. Just go across the other side between two holes. Don't go over a hole. Down this side, straight down. Put the ring straight across, push it down, round, catch up with the other bit, press it down, that's it. You can squish this in a bit, the sellotape with the holes, as long as the holes are clear. And just keep going around. Like I say, just squish it in a bit here, the sellotape. No fancy down stuff, no string or anything, just get into it. Do. That's it. That's across north to south. Now we're going to go east to west in between the holes. three times maybe, four if you want. Right. So there you see, it's tape. Now like I say, you can squish this in a bit, as long as it doesn't make sure the holes for the lashing to go through are either side of the tape. Same down the bottom, just squish it in a bit, and you're ready to go. Voila. Right. So. Again the important thing is. Get the inside and outside of the lashing. With the, with the gut lashing. Leather lashing. There is a kind of usual inside. You can tell. And an outside. Now we're going to start. And I'm going to choose. See if there was a knot in the bottom pagri ring here. I wouldn't start close to it, I'd start away from it somewhere. So, uh, because I've got this, I don't want to start near there, I'll put that maybe there. So I'm going to start about here. Uh, actually, I think I'll start yeah, about here. Okay, my first hole, put the screwdriver through the hole. and flick through the lashing so it's through like that there you go that's it we're started pull as so you must keep the lashing straight no twists no twisting at all you keep it flat straight always and you bend it round like a figure eight and we're going to go underneath here so just a screwdriver flick it up Put it through. Yeah? In India they go that way a lot. I'm going this way anti-clockwise. That's the way I do it. So you don't pull all the lashing through like most people do. Don't do that. Just pull a little bit like this. And then there. So 
there's your start place and you want to just come down at a slight angle going this way and a slight one not straight down just a slight one if you're starting and going this way just slightly go to the right a bit so like you're coming up for the next hole so you take this down roughly to the middle of the next hole and then up and you put you loop this through the next hole I'll just put the screwdriver through and just get a hold of it with the pliers and pull like so so that we've got like this so here's all the rest of the lashing that goes to the big coil there so we started we went down and you go figure eight 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 not not over down and under it's over and over and over and over like an eight so as you can see we've just got a little bit here but just pull a bit more of the lashing here at the beginning just pull a bit more maybe about three lengths don't pull too much and take that up make sure it doesn't twist make sure it's flat equal then pull that so it's just like weaving then over and under pull that up like so I'm going a bit slow here to explain to you guys in my heyday I think I could do a drum and have it tuned in 20 minutes but no more right so pull a little bit more so you're always just pulling a bit more weaving it through like so hope you can see all right underneath hold through just get a good hold of it Pull. don't tighten anything yet because this 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 bottom ring will just move that you've got to keep this ring in the center the cellar tape will do its job uh, reasonably well but you know if you start pulling don't pull until you've got the lashing all the way around the drum just keep it loose the pulling comes after you've weaved it all in like this so pull keep pulling on that length you've got and keep threading it through bit by bit this is the secret I'm going to do it all in real time so you see it all not skip and edit bit boring for you but you, you'll learn better that way so make sure everything's straight see so I'm always just keeping about that much you know no more than a meter you know like in front of me underneath again over difficult hole be careful you're not putting the screwdriver through that hole you know I'm just using a little flat one like that flat not too big just enough to get through the hole I'm not forcing it right there you go pull that over there you've got to keep shaping it underneath Essential you don't twist this lashing, it's flat all the way. Over and under, over and under, like that. Okay. Right, need to pull up some more. Get that over there. Keep the lashing whoa way over there. Just 
and as I say, maybe about three lengths at a time, and you've got to weave it through. Just take that bit, weave it from where you started up to where you are at the moment. Like I say, don't pull tight. Just get it so there's still a bit of slack. Not too much, but because you'll pull the ring, you see? You've just got to make that ring that got to stay centre. The pulling comes at the end. Hard work. Main thing is don't twist this lashing. Right, see, so I pulled that through. Now I've got this to go forward with. with this drum I've got to leave space for that little XLR fitting which on a normal table I wouldn't have to bother about but so let's go back a bit Where it gets tighter and harder to do is the further you go around. Right, so back to the beginning bit again, pull some more. I've seen so many uh, cases of uh, students and they, they, they pull the whole lot through and then they go and they pull it, oh god. So really, a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, roll of sellotape, and you're made. Make sure, like I say, that bottom ring isn't too big. The tighter the better to the uh, little circular bit of wood that's on the bottom of your drum. I would always usually like to use a new bit of lash, a good strong bit, but you know, it's actually, some of it can be quite stiff, so soaking it and all that, but it just expands it. So, yeah. now at the beginning we've got that about a metre or a yard, which the UK is now apart a metre. Right, okay, I think I've got a bit of space there, I guess I need my fitting in. Oh, you've got to think of it all. Right, salad tapes here, but I'll just go this side of it. Sometimes if you've got a big knot on this uh, pagri, I think it's called, this ring, make sure you get it the right side if you come to a knot. Best to always go in front of it, in my experience. I don't have a big knot on this one. It's just Right. So, so far you can see I started here, yeah, I went through and I've gone round, I've kept everything flat, there's no twists, and it's a figure eight this way, figure eight, yeah, right, it's an eight, over and under, over and under, over. I think in, in the video, I can't remember which one it was, the lesson, whether it was six or something, where I showed how to pull the drum, I explained a lot of this already. Right, underneath the sellotape here, but don't hold the lashing, pull it. Right. Underneath. As you can see, I'm keeping the uh, ring fairly central, there's always going to be a little bit. Um, I'll pull here, but it's not too much because I'll pull that back over here when I come round. Right. 
Listen, that happens. You can do all this and then you can start to the end and the lashing breaks. And for me, if the lashing breaks, I just have to do it again. Not a piece of lashing on a drum that's like got a knot in it. I mean, I don't mind that so much in a buyer, but in a tabla, I don't want it. So you can do all this work and it can be in vain if you don't have the right materials. I saw in the shop yesterday, I know there's all this set uh, Thank you, tuning drums you can, from the bottom and all that out there these days that what they're trying to sell. Not for me. I like the traditional. And uh, we had some lashing on some drums yesterday. He said it was jute. It looked good. It was kind of looked like this, but it was still some sort of man-made fiber. But I just I don't like it. I like the leather. It's got the give that these man-made fibres don't have, and I believe in the give. Uh, I got ridiculed recently for saying that the tablet's got to breathe and it needs that. Uh, but these, I got ridiculed by people who don't have the knowledge, you see. They're all talk, all yap, yap, yap about this a tablet and that tablet. You should just get on with playing the tablet. Uh, you know where they are. They know where they are. But they watch my videos to learn, eh? then they praise somebody else. Seen it all. Right, okay. Right, so there's that. Right, getting a bit tight, see it's starting to pull over a bit here. Slightly starting to pull away a bit, so here I'll give it a little bit extra tension to take that, pull that back, without overdoing it. There's no serious pulling at the moment. It might get a bit more difficult to get through the holes as you get round. It's only because it's starting to tension down the head on the drum. Uh, two, three holes to go. At this point, if it were me, I might start going backwards. Yeah? I might start going backwards here, which would be, you know, under. Yeah? And pull that. So, get to the hole here, and that can be quite difficult. It can, but I'm not going to do that. I'll do knots. For your benefit, I'll just pull it all the way around. Because it would be quicker if I went going backwards. It's just, you know, taking that bit of lashing, but that's all left, that last bit, and going back now, because it's short enough. I'll pull it through. Um, those less experienced, maybe it's just best to carry on like this. Lashing as you go along, here. It's just a bit of weaving you're doing. So... If the two holes are here, you want this bottom one really to be in the middle of the two holes at the bottom. Sometimes it doesn't always work out like that, but just get everything as even as you can. Wow. Well, I'm starting to sweat now. Just like this. It's very dull out there today, that's why I've just got the electric light on. Not ideal, but... Oh yeah, there's people on these websites, they moan about hurting their poor little hands doing this. I mean, yes, when I get to the serious pulling, sometimes I just put on some nice gloves, you know, especially those driving leather gloves that are nice and snug to your fingers, you know. You don't hurt your hands. trying to think what kind of accolade or appreciation I can put on the, a link for you guys. I think I've got a good idea. I might put a link on if I put this video up. Not the usual. 
Ravi Shankar playing Raga. See, see, like, see how it's starting to pull over at one side here. This is the ring gap there. Don't know. So I've got to be careful now. Like I say, just make sure there's no twists in this. Whoa, underneath. Tighter. Ah, oh, and then there's always that thing you can do all this work and the head's no good. In a certain kind of signs about heads that you know you can think oh, that that head looks all right. But I've had heads that look alright, and they're no good. And, to be honest, it's really all down to the spot and the quality of the paste. If the spot's shiny and gleamy, that's a dull. The black spot, I would avoid a head if it's dull. It doesn't have a sheen, like a gloss on it. I don't think it's good quality paste. This isn't the ideal head for me. I would. It's got the belly of the goat and the inner piece of skin, but not on the outer. It's a bit rough, hard, um, but sometimes that doesn't matter. As long as it's got good sound. Right, one hole to go. Instead of going all the way around, I am going to try and go backwards for that one hole. Right. So instead of pulling that and go, uh, let's try it. So make sure. Underneath, hope you can see all this. Now this is where it's hard. I'm not going over. I'm going from underneath. So get the, make sure you take the flat of the lashing. There you go. Up to the top. There you go. And. Actually, I'll go backwards one more, and I'll, I'll then, uh, so I'll go backwards on that, see what I mean, just in underneath, right, make sure there's no twists, essential, no twists, right, this one I'll put in, I'll take out, this is the last one, and I'll push this up through, going backwards, It's my screwdriver. Voila! And there we go. It's all been woven through. This is what you end up with. Oops, here. You need coming just underneath the last underneath the to top. It's okay. There. There's the two ends just coming underneath the bottom of the ring. Now because I went anti-clockwise I'm going to take the loose bit here that's coming underneath on the right and tie my first knot. That means if I was to break I've got a bit of slack here so do the knot, keep everything straight so just can you see just um, take the bit here just go underneath the bit coming down, loop through there, and just make it a lot knot, like so. 
There's the knot. Right, I've just done a knot. Tighten it. Leave that bit of slack just there. Right. Obviously you don't do a knot on the on the end bit yet until we've pulled. So there you go. Uh, that's the lashing all the way around. Now we can take off our cellar tape and stuff. Just take a scissors, voila, cut. Careful, cut. As you peel it off, especially the skin, I've taken that off. Uh, this is all rubbish now. So just carefully undo the cellar tape you put on. Back underneath, methodically, everything's methodical. Sit. Now all the setups go and everything, all that stuff, rubbish. And we're left with the tablet head on. There. So not a hard bit. <laughs> the pulling and keeping the head even. So first thing to do what we did is just gently Check where your ring needs a bit of pulling over, so it just needs here. Just put the drum between your legs there and just don't pull hard, just take up the loose slack. So it's just taking up the loose slack. I'm just going to take up the loose slack without pulling all the way around. I do wish this was a new piece of lashing, very tough, but I think I'm going to make it with it. Always check the bottom ring's not getting pulled. That's the hard part for anybody putting their head on. Uh, right. Space it out. Like I say, I've got a bit of extra problem because of this XLR fitting here. Because this is my drum with the mic in it. See, my little XLR fitting there. I've got, I've got to maintain space. Right. Pull up the slack all the way around without pulling very tight. Facing out your uh, lashing, a collie. Right, that's it. So, that's now the lashing. Just taking up the slack. The knot's there. This bit's still, the last bit, before we do the final knot, still loose because we've got a lot of pulling to do yet. The tough pulling. Yeah. Check your ring is central. Mm, it's going to take some pulling, so okay. Right, take what the knot is. You see the terms of uh, two bits lashing, yeah? Within the knot, third, fourth. That's those four there. Leave that knot as the other four. The other knot joins the other four. This knot here, one, two, three, four. Four bits of lashing. I'm going to pull this second one in here. This one. You can always refer to the uh, lesson where I, it might be nine I think, where we uh, take up the tension. It's just the same thing now. So I'm going to feed drum. Not. I'm going to take the second. If you were going the other way around with the lashing, same but the whole. Again, not just up there. Right. So I've pushed four. I'm going to go exactly five. Pull the pull. Go four, six, eight, the same. Pull the second one in of the four. Then the third, the fourth. Yeah. Now check the bottom. It's pulled a bit that way. So go back over again. Pull a wee bit more back where I pulled before. Uh, 
Now I'm going to go, that was north south, I'm going to go east. Oops, I'm going to answer the phone. Right. Okay, where was I? Phone call's done. Uh, right, yeah, we're done north south. Now I'm going two, four, six. I'm going to do east west, check the bottom. Everything's concentric. Good, complete opposite. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Pull that. The end one. Right, where are we? Okay. Right. Okay, we've done north, south, east, west. Now we're going to go. That uh, would be uh, the the four other uh, sets of straps in between the north, south, east, and west. Right. So we've done the first four here. I'm going to do the second four in. See, I've already got a bit of slack from the beginning. So I better take that bit of slack all the way around. Check obviously that you know this uh, the edge is down even all the way around. It's all about keeping it even. If you get anything lopsided putting a head on on a tabla, it's no good. You're gonna have problems keeping it in tune, etc. etc. <clears throat> it's just experience, but how many of you out there don't have somebody to go and say, hey, could you put this head on for me? Um need to do it yourself like I have had to do over the years. I mean I could go to a shop here in London and get it done but it, they charge a lot. I just like taking care of my own drums. Well it's going to sound something at least whether it's quality or not. That's the end bit where it's a bit lower. Pull that there. Right. Okay, everything's looking pretty central, so. Just gonna pull all round once again with a bit more tension this time. Whoa! I'll just go to the other side, keep it balanced. Always like doing opposites on tabla. Even though this makes a bit of slack this side, I'll pick it up later, so I'll go back to where I was. Pull. 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 Check here. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, hard work these days.
Right. Um, I've pulled that reasonably tight, yeah? All round. I mean, I could maybe squeeze a bit more, but I'm not going to bother. The best thing you can do now is... Uh, is uh, isn't it weird how always... Every tabla I've ever done always has, you know, north and south or east and west is a bit higher than north and south. You can tune it, of course, but it always seems to be natural. I'm going to do the last knot now. So, like I say, just go underneath. Pull up here, push your thumb against. Try not to lose too much slack. You always lose a bit. And that's it. Right. I've got two knots at the end. Because what I've got to do now is put the pegs in and tune it as high as it go. And then either leave it overnight, which I'll probably do. Take all the pegs out and pull it again. That's what you've got to do. Depends what pitch you want to get, especially for a higher pitch drum. So just leave this all slack at the moment, these two tails. Leave these two tails. Uh, oops, it is. Here was my hammer. The one I like. Right. Get a ring. Always good to make these little plywood uh, covers for your drums. Easy to do. Right. Like I said on my tuning lesson, make sure you don't hit that skin at all. Be really careful. And don't hit the lashing either. Hit between, you know. You just nick that skin. One little hit with the hammer and nick the edge there. Your, your skin's going to split. much even all round so I've got it even all round but it's really low so I'm definitely gonna have to put the pegs in here bang it up and then tune it again tomorrow or later tonight so put the pegs in go back to the first knot not the last knot the first knot so there's the first knot there next to the last knot and take the four straps with the, the knot being the first one one two three four take the second one in that you would pull and put a, a block in there there see put a block in there's the knot there one two three four put it in this one if you go the other way do it the same it would be that one the other way but here right put that in there one then go to the exact opposite side two four six eight ten which is here and put a block in there right now we go in the middle two four six Opposite side. These blocks are pretty big, hard to get in. Right. There's four blocks in. Put the rest in now. So I always get worried putting blocks in, lashing, having one little flaw snapping. Oh 
reach. You get a bit of experience if you've got some like fat blocks, a bit fatter than the others, where to put them in, you know, like if it's sounding a bit lower than one bit, put the fatter block in there. Right, so that's all the blocks in on one strap. afraid to hit it down a bit. sound at least. Right, I'm going to bung it up on two straps now. Dodgy dodgy, whoa. We live in peril. Right, take the first one again, where the first knot is, put it up on two, the two middle ones of the four, yeah? Oh, don't tell me the tape's running out already. Right, okay. So put them up on two all round, equally all round. Right, it's up on two all round now. overnight and we'll continue. Because what I'm going to do is take those blocks out again and pull it again. Uh, hang on, where's my tuner? up to about C. Ok, 
okay. We'll continue. Anyway, looking nice. Not sure about the sound yet. I'll let it stretch in. Come back to it. I think I want to get up to C sharp. Voila, to be continued. Hello again. Here we go again. This is the day after. Uh, the tape ran out yesterday after uh, an hour. So um, I've left the tabla that I reskinned, reheaded overnight. Here it is. Um, after the tape ran out, when the tape ran out, I had it up uh, two pieces of lashing on each peg. I put a third piece of lashing up after the tape ran out yesterday. <clears throat> so it was three pieces of lashing on one peg, and I've tuned it up to as high as it, well, wh where it would go with that. I'd roughly go to, I think, almost C sharp or about there. But as you can see, it's now come down to it's dropped overnight to uh, the key of B. So it's like two notes overnight. Uh, but the head's okay. It's uh, not bad. Uh, clean. So uh, <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out all these pegs and pull up the tension uh, now that the uh, head, the skin is uh, settled overnight. Hopefully I can pull it up, get it back to this pitch or hopefully higher, at least C, because I want this drum about C, C sharp for its size, which is 5 and 3 eighths, and uh, get it up on one strap. Now what I recommend is um, putting on a new head. Sometimes you might have to do what I've done several times. Um, some heads they might come up easy and tune up easy. Some are more difficult. So just keep doing what I've done. Pull them, put the blocks in up to three straps, leave it overnight. And the next day take the blocks out, pull it, put the blocks in again. If it's still not to the desired pitch for the size of the drum, do it again another day. Be patient. Be patient, of course, and keep everything concentric, everything equal, and you will get a result. Okay, well, I'm going <clears> to <throat> turn around and take the blocks out and retune the drum. Okay? Okay, here we are again, and... had the string in to see what it would sound like. Um, right, here we go. <clears throat> Take the blocks out. I'll do that opposites as well. I know it seems a shame to take them out when you've got it sounding nice, but <clears throat> high enough pitched. The thing about leaving it overnight is the head starts to sit down. Okay, so as of yesterday, same thing. Take up the slack. Find the first knot. The first knot where you started. That's the last knot, that's the first one. Any spacing of the lashing, do it now when it's still a bit loose. <clears throat> Make it even. <clears throat> right, so 
as, as, as same as yesterday, the pulling. No fancy hooks here. God's greatest gift, the hand. <clears throat> okay, so this the first from the knot going up the first strap, take the second one in and give it a pull. And the third one and the fourth one here. Pull that. Go to the exact opposite side, two, four, six, eight, ten. Same again. Pull. I'm not going to do a real massive ooh, tug of war pull here. I'm going to be firm. It's all about feel. That's why the hands, you can't get that feel with a hook. Check the bottom pedigree ring. Right. Two, four, six. Go to east now. Pull. 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 And go to west. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, I've done north, south, east and west, now I'm just going to, that's kind of to even up the tension. I'm just going to start at the beginning again and pull all the way around. Hard to get your fingers underneath now. So, take the hammer, flick up, get the fingers underneath. Full steady tension. Just check the bottom. <clears throat> I reckon at the end I'll have to put this up on maybe two straps, depends the pitch I wanted but the pitch for this drum isn't crucial for me ah. these are just my fun drums <coughs> with the microphones inside which I hardly ever use this point again you have to be careful look for any flaws in your lashing undo this bottom nut uh, uh, knot. Where am I? Right, that one. Last piece, pull up the tension, get a good grip. Whoa, come on, put your thumb there, hold it. Voila, there's the two knots, bit of spacing to do here, right, so that's it, taking the blocks out, do anything other than use the flat of your hand to rub the spot on the surface. Now it's essential before you uh, even think about putting blocks in and all that, get the drum tuned 
as evenly as you can all the way around. It's not going to happen by a miracle if it's out of tune you put the blocks in, it's just, you're not going to get there. Right. So my two high points are here, north south. Like I say that. Okay. Right. Straighten like this. Right, in with the first block, like I said before yesterday. Same thing. Take the first knot. Take those four pieces of lashing there from the first knot. One, two, three, four. Put it in the second piece. That's the bit that goes over and down, not a bit that goes up, a bit goes down. The second one in. <clears throat> Actually, I'll put one of these in. Go to the opposite side, two, four, six. That's north and south, two pegs, two, four, six. Ah. This one there. Round to the opposite side. Right, that's four pegs in. The slackest part usually be, is the end, where you come to the end knot. The four at the end usually tends to be the slackest. Because that's where the end knot is and you can't get the full tension pull on it. So put one of your fatter blocks if you've got one in there. Over to the opposite side. Whoa. So you just use the flat of your hammer there and to just flick that up, get your fingers on it. All the tools are there. None of that fancy Dan stuff. Fancy tablers with their fancy contractions. None of that for me. Maybe if they concentrate more on that, play them, they'd have a better life. Anyway, here we go. <clears throat> right, that's the eight pegs in. I'm going to go at the highest point. idea where that is. Seems about C sharp. Hopefully it's just slightly above the pitch. Slightly sharp to C sharp, but again that's going to tension down. It's up on one strap. It might, again overnight, again the, the tension might drop a little, maybe a whole note, maybe half a note, maybe, maybe not at all, I don't know. But then I'll just put 
what I would do is I'd put take four four pegs and put it up onto two straps only four at a time not eight north south east and west do it in gradual stages but right just let that little settle just get a kitchen knife Right, take my kitchen knife, slide it gently, gently, gently underneath. No roughness here. Just move it around underneath the keynote very, very carefully. Take a bit of space. Get my piece of string wherever, wherever it's gone. Oh, just when I need my string, I've lost it. String, string, come to me. Here you are. Right, here's my piece of string. You need a piece of string. It's not too fat, not too thin. You know, like ordinary sewing thread's a bit thin. So just put it in there, underneath. Slide the string underneath the kin about halfway. Don't ram it in. About halfway between the edge of the keynote and the edge of the drum. Maybe it's my sitar playing friend, Clem, who was featured on two TV channels yesterday, playing. It's an honour, because of Ravi's uh, passing. There you go, voila! went to the shop, JAS, Jazz Musicals, they're online, uh, JAS Musicals, um, I just went down to the shop, I took a look at the heads, that one was the right size, it's a Benares style head, style, I don't think it's a true Benares one, Benares ones don't usually have rings as such, this has got a couple of layers, when you're choosing a head, remember what I said, there's the old one, Poor old old one. Don't know if you can see there, but make sure it's shiny here. If it's one with rings, the more rings the better. If you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, well, I think this is eight, that's great. A lot of five. I find more rings the better. And shiny, it's got to be shiny, good quality. There, jazz. I'm advertising jazz. I want my heads cheaper next time. I put them up. That's it, apart from just, uh, depends how you want to take up the excess, um, I mean, I should, oh my god, excuse me a minute, okay, sorry, sorry about that phone call, um, well, I'm not actually sorry, it just happened, didn't it, so here we go, it is my friend, Clem, Clem Alford, the sitar player, he's coming up. Featured yesterday, playing a little bit on our Channel 5 here, and uh, featured on ITV1, there's a mug main channels, and uh, I'm actually really quite pleased that they featured a Westerner, a very top good Western player, sitar player, um, 
as a feature. Right, see now I'm going to weave the excess, starting with the first knot here, the first one. I'm just weaving over and under the bits of lashing here, over and under, over one, under another, over one, right? Okay. So, right. Get that under there. Tricky. Back to the weaving, right? I'm just going to stop the camera now because you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm just weaving over and under to take up the excess, but I'll just do it and when it's finished I'll show you. There's no point in taking up time uh, just doing this because uh, you get the gist of what I'm doing. I'll stop the camera. Hello again, there you go then. <clears throat> See, I've just weaved, uh, weaved all that spare lashing around the bottom to get it all out of the way nice and tidy. <clears throat> One little tip is, wherever the first knot is, which is here, when you start, when leave, I would leave a long piece, a reasonable long piece, like a couple of feet or half a meter, if you have it spare, uh, on the first knot because that's the knot. If you did break a piece of lashing and you did want a rescue remedy of a knot, you would need to pull from there around. The end piece is not so important to have such length on. This was about equal, but there you go, it's weaved. That's the drum, it's done. The beauty of getting it on one strap is if it drops down a bit, I'll quite happily put up four of the blocks on two straps and then eight of the blocks on two straps. I'll get it where I want and it'll look nice. So voila. I'll just give it a little blast with this little bananas by it. It's a bit high pitched. Not bad. Uh, anyway, this is like I say, the drum with the mic inside. There's the uh, fitting in there. Already explained in a previous video on my channel had to fix those mics in. So I'm not really that concerned because if I was to play it with the mics inside, inside anyway. It kind of changes the effect, so it's not that crucial this drum. But it's always nice to have a nice sounding drum. There you go, I think it will improve a bit. So there, that's a whole video on how to put a head on a tabla from start to beginning. And all I needed was my trusty hammer, a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, a kitchen knife to put the thread in, and the old trusty cellar tape. Beat that folks, that's all I can say. Get yourself a little hat for protection. Voila! So, this is uh, me saying, you've no excuse now, you can put your own head on. Best of luck if you try it in the future. And all I can say is there's a great deal of satisfaction. If you do it, you get a result, you've done it yourself. Okay? Take care out there. Bye for now.